Hi there, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you about Amazon CloudFront caching and invalidation. For knowing the basics about CloudFront, you can watch my previous video also in which I have given you the basic example. And I will be continuing that example only in order to show you how the caching works and what are the policies that we can have as well as how to create invalidations. So basically, in uh, this is also like a basic over here given CloudFront, like whenever the client requests, uh, rather than going sending the request to the origin, so the request is being serviced from the CloudFront. So this edge location, it checks, update the cache based upon the headers, cookies, as well as it expires based upon the TTL, the total time that we have defined till what our data will be cached. So this is what we are going to define in the policies. So caching, we can, as I said earlier, we can do on the basis of, we can do on the basis of uh, headers, cookies, query string parameters also. So the main goal is to maximize the cache it and minimize the request from the origin. We can also set the total time to live that is TTL from zero second up to one year. Moreover, we can create uh, invalidate invalidation rules also there, like how quickly our data should be shown back the, uh, without any, uh, like uh, we can have a strong consistency defining this invalidation rules. So this is how we can have the, the maximum cache hits. So suppose if you're having a static content that is not having uh, headers, there is no caching rules. Uh, so we can use this one and provide the request our static content rather than from origin from the cloud front. If we are having a dynamic content, so here we can, based upon the cache, we can check the headers in the cookies, then we can forward the request to our application load balancer and uh, what kind of dynamic content rest HTTP server, then you're easy to instance where you are hosting your application. So this is how we can maximize the cache hits. So in today's lab, I will be continuing with the existing website that we created last time and we hosted it to the cloud from distribution. So the new thing that we are going to do in that is the caching policies, uh, creating invalidation rules and accessing the website. So let's move on to the cloud front. So you can see this is the previous cloud from distribution that we have created. So I'll just open the link over here. So you can see this was the website that we created last time. So you can go to the behavior. And you can select over here and click edit. So you can see over here. This is the bucket from which our website is being hosted. And we have this HTTP and HTTPS protocols and allow HTTP methods get and head. We can choose this also if you want. Restrict viewer access, no. We haven't done any CloudFront signed URLs. So even I will be providing you one video on this, how you can use the signed URLs. And cache key and origin request. So we have over here cache policy by default define over here. So if you want to view the policy, you can view also, or if you want to create a policy, so let's move to the create policy. So when you're creating your policy, you have to provide over here name, uh, description, and what kind of headers you want, and query strings like based upon the application, content that you want to deliver, and the cookies. Let's go back to the here you can choose over here you can see via request via response origin request and origin response these things lambda agent cloud from cloud front functions also we can use so 
So this is the by default cache policy in origin request policy that is being attached. So once you go to the create policy over here, you can see the name is coming over here, description and total time to live in seconds. So this, if you make it zero, so immediately the data will get updated in our edge locations. So we can choose the time over here. We can change the time and then we can create this policy and we can attach to our CloudFront distribution for caching purpose. Now let's go back to our CloudFront. Okay. So as I showed you this one, like we are having this website hosted. So I will just go back to S3. So you can see that currently the my policy, it is being the total TTL is one second to up to eight, to three, six something seconds is there. So it won't update the website. So I will just go to the, this is CloudFront one. Let me, okay. So we can download this file. Okay. So we have downloaded the file over here. So let me make some changes. New policy and in validation. Okay, I will save this file. Let's upload this file. So you can see over here, these changes are not reflected, but if I go back to my bucket over here, and if I want to open this one, you can see in the origin it is being done, but our CloudFront cache is not being updated. Now, in order to update that, we will just go back to the cloud from distribution and we will just go to the existing one and you can see over here in validations so in the previous video i have shown you this one so we can put the object path forward slash star so you can copy to the new one and then you can create in validation so you can see it's in progress So we can refresh our page. So you can see the cache has been updated. So the most important thing over here is in the distribution. When we go over here, when we go to the behaviors, here we can create our own policy. So these are the you can see this is the current policy that is working default policy when cf compression is enabled minimum one second maximum this default ttl 86400 seconds means after this much seconds my data will automatically update it in the cache so headers none cookies none there is no query strings nothing is there so this is how we can manage so if we don't want to use this one we can create our own policy over here create a policy and we can define ourselves like how much the minimum and maximum time to live and the default detail how much you want and if you have some headers and all like if you want to separate the static content and the dynamic content that also you can do it so if it is dynamic then it will directly go to the origin and if it is a static content then you can directly serve it from the cloud front I hope you like my video. 
so in this one we just discuss about invalidations and policies and all in the upcoming videos i will be providing you some more examples related to um how we can use it for um in uh, like Geo geographic restrictions we can also apply like which countries from which the url can be accessed as well as we can have some more related to the query parameters headers and all how we can separate the dynamic and the static content so please do like share and subscribe my channel thanks for watching